It was the carriage house right. to that estate, yeah, right? That's right. Exactly. And they got them both uh, landmarked and they got them raised money to renovate and open this museum in 97. So it was really yeah. fun to be a part of that. Oh, I guess. Mm -hmm. Remember Gary's name? Yeah. yeah. I had a friend who was, uh, people have been worried about the grounds because Doris Nelson kept oh, them so beautifully. All those years, and and we do want that building and the grounds restored. And you know, there's a coalition of, of historic yeah, entities that are working together, and uh, you know, really kind of trying to help steer the owner in the right direction. You know, to get the right kind of help that he needs in order to do that restoration and not feel like he's uh, you know helpless or hopeless. Not everybody can fix a log house. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely not. You know, we had expert uh, architects and expert uh, uh, logsmen. Uh, David uh, Rogers was our uh, mountain, I call him the mountain man. I love to watch that renovation tape. It's got great music and it shows them, you know, taking out pieces of the uh, old logs because this entire south side had to be replaced. On this building here? On this building, yeah. It, it had been... It had been pretty ravaged by weather, even in even in the early 70s. And, and what my mom did was to call someone to, to get uh, a repair. But nobody worked on logs. This was early 70s, right? And nobody worked on the logs. And what they said was the best that they could do was to treat it so it wouldn't get further damaged by the bugs. And they uh, put cedar siding, you know, kind of, um, kind of you know. Whatever that like siding part. Kind of, but it was all one, they were all one piece. But yeah, and then that's what lasted from about, it must have been about 1971 or two, until 1994. And of course, when they took it off, you could really see there'd been a lot more damage in those 20 some years. You like it? Yeah. 
What's it taste like? I don't know yet. I just had the cherry. Uh huh. Good stuff. It's good. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. You're an amazing woman. Well, Mr. Kane is still here, but, but uh, you know, stand by. He's on stand by. So it's two dollars a scoop, so you get one or two. Although, yeah. yeah. It's so good. I got to have the first, you know. And would you like chocolate or caramel? Yeah. Which? Right. Yeah. A little both? Yeah. Whoa! Look at that. Oh, Marianne is uh, living it up. Living it up. Grayson. <laughs> well, she's got the best view in the house. She does. She's ready to get her ice cream for Sunday, too. Hey, hey, you're going to spit that thing out in a minute. <laughs> All over Daddy's head. We're going for ice cream.
You don't have to move. Can I have your attention, please? Could I have your attention, please? First of all, before we talk to Jack, I want to let you know that if you like this event and like supporting the museum and the heritage activities we have, our premier fundraising event of the year is coming up in October, on October 22nd. And that is our Celebrating 160 Holiday Gala. Now, celebrating what 60? What does 160 refer to? Can anybody think of what 160 would have anything? Jack, what does 160 mean to you? I think that's when uh, somebody landed on the beach. Uh, we do. This is a guy who knows his history. We're celebrating 160 years since 1851. Come on in. You'll get your ice cream in just a sec. We just have a little program. And... Uh, we have 160 seats at this gala at Salty's on Alki. It's a lunchtime event on Saturday the 22nd. We have a number of tables already signed up for, and I just heard today, and please get your hands ready for a round of applause, just heard from uh, Marcy Stone here in the yellow that the 34th District Democrats are going to be putting together a table for this, so the number keeps rising. Could you please give her a hand? Marcy, as you know, is very active, very active, and she's got a calendar of other events that her organization is putting on, and you can see her for more information about that. But right now, we are here to learn a bit about an institution, aren't we? Um, I heard, heard somebody uh, ask Jack earlier, you know, do you like ice cream? <laughs> and what was your answer? I think it's honed to a fine... Point. What was your answer? I said I didn't get like this breathing air. <laughs> now, uh, you may think that it's Husky Deli, but some of you may go back far enough to remember that these ice cream cones were called Huskies, and Jack's going to tell us about this, but first, tell us about your grandfather. I think he came here to sell refrigerators, isn't, yeah. isn't that true? Um, my grandfather, Herman, um, was born on a cattle breeding um, ranch back in Peru, Indiana, and um, was one of about eight brothers, and when he grew up, they, they, he left him to Washington and start his own cattle breeding operation near, um, kind of near Yakima, called White Bluffs, and he worked there for a couple of years, and he didn't do very good there, and he um, ended up selling the, the ranch and moving to Seattle and he was selling Kelvinator refrigerators. And he uh, came across this store for sale, it's called Edgewood Farms, which is at 4735, right next to the Bakery Nouveau, on, which is now the Arts West card shop. And he bought it, it was a little grocery store. At that time, it was a little grocery store right next door where Northwest Art is, was Bailey Market, which is another grocery store. Right next to that was Safeway, which is another grocery <laughs> Next to that was a little coffee shop where the, the Mashikos is, and then on, on where we are now was the AMP, wow. and they all had, they are all selling the same stuff. <laughs> but back then everybody went shopping every day, there was no Costco. You know, so everybody went shopping, they had a little cooler with a chunk of ice in it, and they all went shopping every day. But my grandfather um, bought it, and it was pretty tough times. And he got a contract with the Seattle Public Schools to make little ice cream cones for their lunch program. And he made, he called them Huskies, and they were kind of like a nutty buddy. They had, um, it was vanilla dipped in chocolates, rolled in nuts. And he called them Huskies. And then about 1936, he, um, he had a little drawing to see, you know, what he should name the ice cream. But he didn't like anything he got out of the drawing, so he named it Husky, <laughs> which I think he wanted to do anyway. And, um, and they went down to Olympia the next year and trademarked Husky this and Husky that. We got trademarked for everything. And picked purple and gold. And I don't think the Huskies were wearing helmets even then. So, <laughs> I don't know if that was their colors, but that's the ones we got. But um, during the war, Alice, my Aunt Alice, who I'm sure all of you guys know, 
she was there holding down the fort, mm -hmm. and cool. she they were there during the depression with little coupons for food, and during the war there was butter coupons. And, I mean, we don't. Most of us don't remember that. Some of us. <laughs> it was pretty tough. We haven't seen anything like that. And um, and then after the war, when my dad came back from the war, and my uncles, they decided that they were going to change it around and turn it into a deli. So they started kind of moving it towards a deli, and in the 50s, it kind of became a deli where we sold lunch meat and cheese, and still made ice cream. We started, actually the very first day my grandfather bought the store, he bought an ice cream machine, put it in the front window, started making ice cream in the front window. <laughs> but the boys didn't want to do that anymore. <laughs> so they moved it in the back room. And actually we have so much, we make so much ice cream we couldn't do it now. But, um, so they, they, uh, they turned it into more of a deli and it's just kind of haphazardly evolved into what it is now. <laughs> why, but, why is it the kind of thing that your whole family has been involved with? And will it stay that well, way? Well, it holds us think? all together. It's kind of um, something we all, you know, are proud of and we all want to be part of. So they're, all, so they're all there, you know, every day. All my, and even the kids that work there are there the days they're not working. They all want to hang out there. <laughs> <laughs> Was there ever a time when you said, oh, I don't want to do this? Not for me. I always wanted to be there. Why do you love it? Because it's like a big party all the time. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. You know, I enjoy it. So it's it's just a kick. But um, yeah, it's it's part. It's nice to be part of such a cool town. You know, I mean, you, you go to Bellevue, or when people move over from Bellevue, they don't understand because this is not um, a Klahani with a strip mall. This is. Um, place with a little heart and soul, you know, and everybody's very proud of their town. You know, if you ran into somebody in Europe and they asked you where you're from, you'd say West Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't say Seattle. And sometimes I ask people, I say, where are you, guys, where are you from? And they say, uh, Seattle. I say, what part of Seattle? And they'll say, why do you want to know? Never mind. <laughs> It's been a treat. It's just a, a great town. What other businesses are in your league in, in terms of longevity? There's um, Alki Lumber, I think, is a little older than us. I think he started in 1925. Um, the Spud Fish and Ships is right in there with us. I think they're a couple years younger. But I don't know other than that if there's that much. I mean, if there is something, I don't know about it. It's kind of neat. <laughs> We're all here for ice cream today. How many flavors do you have we make usually? About, about 40. But I make ice creams for some of the restaurants and uh, you know, like some of the places in Chinatown, Funk, some oddball ice creams. And, <laughs> and some of the breweries, like I made a sharp cheddar ice cream that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds horrible, but it's good. <laughs> and we've made garlic ice cream for the garlic festival. Did you make the Guinness? No, we're working. No, no, that's actually uh, Snoqualmie does that. Oh, okay. But I'm thinking of making one for the. Um, we're working on something for the Terrible Beauty. So we make a, a ginger ice cream for um, Mashiko with a caramel swirl in it. That's very good. And then a, um, a um, beer ice cream for the brewery, which is like Husky Flake, but it's like a malt ball with chocolate chips in it. It's very good. <laughs> Uh, Elliot Bay, and they sell a ton of it, especially out in Burien. <laughs> what does it take to be an ice cream making expert? I mean, how well, long did it know, take for you to learn? I, you know, I learned as a kid, my dad used to um, get us up when we were little guys and drag us up there and help him make ice cream. He always made ice cream in the middle of the night because he, he was a lot harder worker than I am. <laughs> he would work all night and then work all day. You know, he'd make ice cream in the middle of the night and work all day long. And they were open from 10 to 10 every day except Monday. And every Monday we had to work even harder than the days that they were open. So it wasn't like we ever got much time off. So we had to go and clean the store and all that. So that's the first thing I did after he died. I said, you know what, I'm going to stay open every day and I'm going to have a day off. <laughs> Does anybody have a question for Jack that you've always wanted to ask? Yeah. 
Do you know where the song I Scream, You Scream, We All Scream for Ice Cream came from? <laughs> no, but it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know that. How many brothers and sisters have been? I'm one of nine. Can you tell us all the names and the relationships? <laughs> well, you know, when I was in high school in the 70s, my Uncle Bob had eight children, my Uncle Hugh had three, my, my dad had nine. And my cousins from all over the country would come to work in the summertime. Mm -hmm. So it was almost all Millers back then. And, you know, if you weren't a Miller, uh, <laughs> you down here. You know. but, um, and it's almost going to be that way again because I'm one of nine and there's 24 grandkids, almost all of which live in West Seattle. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've got like four of them working, or five of them working up there right now. <laughs> so, so you could come down here. Yeah. I can. <laughs> which we greatly appreciate. Oh, thank you. And you should know that Jack is also one of our, he's a member of our advisory council uh, for the last couple of years, which we greatly appreciate having people who we can call on really just for some advice like we do our members in the community kind of help run our museum and our historical society in you know a good direction we really appreciate the partnerships that we have with you jack well it's a great hey. thing well we have a lineup of people who have come <laughs> since and jack we got to put you back to work <laughs> verona some music please
This metal is the next one up. All right, well, these are the popular I want to see what happens to it. <laughs> now, what do you think? It's good. It's good. Do you know what the flavor is? Husky Blake. All right. What is your name? Alina. Alina what? Diane. And where do you live? What part of the area do you live in? I live in Lake Union. Lake on, Union. She lives on you came all the way to West Seattle for Husky ice cream today. She goes to Elk Elementary. All She's, right, you come every day. We're every hoping weekend. we're in the same class. All right. He goes over to his place in, in Eastern Washington, my sister owns it, and it's called Mazama Store. All of our went through a bit West Park, and they sell our ice cream over there. They go through it. It's fun. They sell more than a half gallon of her Winthrop. Winthrop. Mazama. Well, that's my room. Giant. They sell them. You can go farther down. Yeah. A half a gallon. Mr. Beasley. Mr. Beasley, I would like your assessment of the ice cream. That's you. Great. Wonderful. All right. Thanks, Bob. We've been there 30, 20 years. Now for three. Which ones did you get last time? These ones? Cool. I'm gonna get something. Switch it up. Alright. 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 All right, it's going to be tricky, though, with all that whipped cream on there. Let's see how this works out. Yay, not so bad. All right. Satisfied? Shh. Oh, I'm the money. Yeah, the lockout. Jackson, you could get this one for free. Well, and you Thank you. No. Is that right there? Yeah, I should have jumped in. Oh, okay, I'm armed. Well, that's a good, uh, a good cause to keep that going and keep it, keep it on the straight and narrow. John knows that. He's a good proofreader too. He's a good writer, but he's also a good proofreader. Real production. Ice cream. It's good. What is it? What kind of ice cream is it? Uh, I forget. <laughs> what kind of ice cream is it? I forget. <laughs> now that's a great name for an ice cream. I forget. Thank you. 
we, we haven't picked up the colors in 30 years. You must not be from West Seattle. No. You know, I went to the I was telling folks, there was a time for you and I where this wasn't retro. <laughs> this is real time. Oh, man. Yeah, I went to the Six Stadium concert for Henry's Lane. That must have been incredible. Oh. Oh, <laughs> what did you think of the ice cream? Oh, I love ice cream. Yeah, they do a good job. I was here for your big do for the save the, the restaurant. So are you in the photo? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Right next to the mayor. Oh, great. I was I talked to you. I'm a friend of the county. Oh, I that's right. That that's day. right. I remember that your face is funny. I called her after that. You gave me your phone number. It was just nice to talk to her. Yes, it is. She sounds the same as she does to get out of home. Yeah. So, Jack, how do you think it went today? I think it was a great success. Huh? No, 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 no. You see it says pause? It says record right okay, now. Okay, we're recording. Jack, thank you so much for coming, and we're going to give you several copies of this. Place Matters, a poster. Thank you for being on the advisory I'm going to put it in the hall. Good. That's a in the perfect window. place. Yeah. Perfect place. Everybody wants to come see themselves. <laughs> this is exactly 200 people plus a, plus a pooch. Really? Yeah. I hope we can save it. I'm sure we can. We're working on it and step by step. Seriously, it takes, it takes a long time. We're working with the partner moment. But it is moving along slowly. But sure. It's easy to like. Tom Yes. And we're going through the Architectural Review Committee of the Landmarks Board. Well, we had the pleasure of sitting together. That's our seat in Grace. Okay. Fundraisers ago. There you go. Thank you. Okay, just stay there for a moment. I'm going to zoom in on you guys. Okay, tell me your names. Okay, I'm John. I'm Alma. John and Alma. At Alki Beach at the Log House Museum of the Historical Society. Here we go.